we're going to be working with some wood tonight. And I, I saved the container because I have used this Valspar paint on all my pumpkin and fall stuff. Hey, Willie. So I saved it. And it's one of the little small bot jars. And it's called, it's satin. And it's called La Fonda Copper. I just love how this color turns out. It's not real orangey or real bright. It's just, it's just different. I love it. So I saved that just in case anybody had to ask. All right, what we're going to be doing tonight, I'm going to show you how I made this pumpkin. All right, and we're going to do three sizes. So I'm actually starting from scratch on these two so you can kind of see how I did this. It requires power tools. Let me plug in my glue gun so we are plugged in and ready to go. And after we get done with the pumpkins, we are going to decorate a tear tray that I've been making. Thank you, Dawn. I appreciate it. And check this out. I made one in gray and brown. Is that not cute? I love this one. That's going to be hard to sell these. It really is. But we're going to be working with the one I showed you how I made last week. All right. So, so basically what I did, this has a couple coats of that paint on it. Okay. And these are spools. Now, I originally bought these, thank you, for the tear trays because I was having trouble finding the finials to go on top. And I'll tell you what, I wasn't paying the prices in Michaels for their finials. And I thought, I can use these spools and stack these up on top of each other. And I think they were in a bag of like five or six for like three something. I could have used wood from out in the yard, like sticks and stuff, but I didn't want to go there. I wanted to do it this way. So this is why I did this. So this is my drill, okay? I have my own set of tools. I have a staple gun. I got a bunch of stuff. Well, take it off the verse and make sure it's tight. But what you need to do is you need to drill a hole down in here and I'll show you why. There we go. I love my power tools. All right. So then I took one of these dowel rods and they're, you can get them in the Dollar Tree. They're those skewers is what they're called. And I had one out. Yeah, they're right here. All right, so then what I did was I stuck that in here and I glued it, I hot glued. And then I took this down to measure where I needed to cut it off. All right, so I'm gonna pull it up just a tiny bit. Oh, now I got it really stuck in there and I didn't even, there we go. <laughs> Haven't even glued it yet. And it's already stuck fast. All right, so I'm gonna cut it right there. All right, so I have another one for this one. And then I had these, cause it's hollow down the middle. It's drilled down the middle. So I got these to kind of put on top so you couldn't see them. All right, get that over there. <laughs> I love power tools. I really do. That one I must have already glued in because it's not coming out. Nope, it's not. All right. So let me make sure. Okay. So what I did was I shot some glue down, down the spool. All right. And then I glued that down like that. And I'm not going to touch that. So I'm going to use some of that. And then I glued this little do jobber in the hole just to kind of cover up the hole. And I didn't burn myself. Woohoo! It's a good night. I like the hot glue. I, d I don't like using wood glue all the time because sometimes it takes so long to set up. Hi, Iona. How are you? I'm making some pumpkins. And then we're going to do a, a farmhouse centerpiece. 
But I wanted to show you how I made this pumpkin so you would know how to make your own. And these are spools from Michael's. Look at that. I was going to pick up the drill. I didn't need the drill. I need the glue gun. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So that is glued in there. And then I'm going to glue that down in the hole. And it was actually just awesome. Some of the greenery that I had down here, the fall greenery. So, just to make it look fallish. And I didn't glue this on, so I need to glue that on in place. And what I liked about using the spools, okay, you have the spool that you can tie stuff around because you have all this to work with. And this is. Let's see, the spools are three inches, and you got about a two inch base there that you can tie tie around. All right, so I need my, I need my wire. I was so organized, there we go, okay. And then I just took, I have this, this stick that I use occasionally. I don't know why I left those on the end. But then I just wrapped some rusty wire that I had around. Hi, Susan. How are you? Did you get your signs? And your gnome and check this out remember I was saying last week I was trying to find the you know this the glitter the sequins with in bat form I couldn't find them so I made my own bats don't they look cute they match the bats in his beard on the sign he's listed the signs listed and all the little little tear tray signs that match him are also listed. Hi, Nanny Dot, how are you? All right, so we're gonna take this off and we're gonna glue this in here. And then we're gonna make another one for this one. And I know most of you follow me and I'm supposed to go on usually on Wednesdays at two, but I have an appointment. Oh, thank you. So I won't be on tomorrow at 2. I'm going to try and go on live at, um, oh good, live at 11. And I got a really cool Christmas project we're going to do. Okay. Welcome, Susan. Where are you watching from? So glad you could join us. All right, so we've got our pumpkins and we need our ribbon because we're going to tie a little bow on the front. I love this check ribbon. It's my absolute farmhouse favorite. I almost couldn't find myself here. But we're on. And where's my big, big, big scissors? Okay, use my little, little scissors. So put them down there. Nope. Probably in the bottom of my thing. Alright. So, what I did was I just put two loops, okay, and two tails. Arizona, is it hot? And then you're just going to kind of crisscross them, okay? And then what we're going to do is we're going to take some raffia, all right? And we're going to use the raffia to tie it to the spool. Now for these, I went ahead and I, um, I had like a, a stain, a walnut stain that I put on them. 
I'm going to try and do this backwards so you can see what I'm doing. May not work. Nope. Okay, so basically, I'm just tying the ribbon to the spool with the raffia. Okay. And then I'm just going to, on that one I just did a knot. I wasn't sure if I did another bow. Okay. So, and then I'm going to trim some of it because we don't need it that long. And then we're going to dovetail our tails here on the ribbon. Oh my gosh. I'll tell you, I lived in Texas for a while and I don't miss that heat either. <laughs> in Arizona, it's probably a dry heat, isn't it? All right, then we're going to get our little trilly piece of wire in there. Because that kind of looks like the, um, the vine on the pumpkin. And I think I'm going to put it underneath. There. I was looking for a little space to glue it down. All right, so we've got that. And I'm thinking maybe this is just a little bit too big. So I'm going to downsize this a little. There we go. I can always take off the bottom of the tail. Hey, hey, hey. The blocks of wood were two by fours and they were out in our garage. And see, I've got them in three different sizes. Isn't that cool? Actually, this one I found it my favorite haunt that I go to all the time. <laughs> and it gave me the idea. It didn't have anything on top. It was just, it just had a leaf stapled there and a piece of wire. And I'm like, that really looks disgusting. So, right? So this one I'm going to try and stick in this side. We'll put that in before we put the bow in. There we go. There's so many different ways you can do it. You could paint a jack-o'-lantern face on here. I prefer not to do that because I kind of like the farmhouse look, the country decor. That's how I decorate my home. So I don't usually use that. All right, and then we'll get some raffia. And we'll tie that sucker to the to the spool. And if you're not, um, I have all this Facebook, Etsy, Instagram, Pinterest, and YouTube. You can find me on any of the uh, any of that social media. Thank you. Yes, right. This whole centerpiece that I'm going to do tonight, this is just a small portion of what we're going to do. Um, we're going to decorate the whole thing. We're going to do one of the tear trays and we're going to decorate it. Now we have to pick out some leaves for this. I love raffia. I think it really, really jacks it up. Okay, so see, we've got our three pumpkins. All right, let's move this out of the way for now. I don't move my towel tool out of the way because I already stabbed myself in the hand with the with 
the uh, drill once today. Get rid of that. Okay. So, when I was at my favorite haunt, I also found um, a candle ring. Now, these are kind of out of style now. But check out the colors of those leaves. You don't need to leave them on there. Thank you, Susan. So, I thought we'll take those off. Actually, originally I thought, let me just move this to the side. And this is, this is another thing you can do. If you have a tear tray like this, okay, you can always decorate under the tear tray. Look at all that greenery, that foliage that you've got under there in the fall colors. Isn't that a great idea? So they're not just for candles. If you've got one of these tear trays, you can put that underneath. And see, when I made these, I made a really thick base. Thank you. Understand. Thank you. Appreciate it. So, so it sits up higher. And I also did that so if I wanted to put a grapevine wreath under here and put stuff in the grapevine wreath, I could do that. Okay? But what we're going to be using tonight, I had bought these last year, and I, I still have a bunch left. So I'm thinking about putting these in my Etsy boutique because check this out. Isn't that cute? Okay. So we're going to be using that. And we're going to take some of the leaves off of this. I could still pluck a bunch of stuff and leave it in the back and no one would ever know. So I'm just trying to come up with a color combination here. Like I like these two. So maybe just one of those with two of those. So don't just look at it as, as a candle ring anymore. It has many other options. See, I like the are fall colors. So we're still working with our color, um, color palette. And like I said, look for me tomorrow at 11 because I can't go on at 2. And wait to see the easy, awesome Christmas wreath I've got. We're going to do tomorrow. It's going to blow you away. I like easy. Easy peasy. Not sure if that get lost over there. No, not really. Okay, so we can go with that color over here. So there we got our little one done and our big one. Just a block of wood painted orange. Now, let's go for one of these more orange. I thought this is awesome for fillers. And it sits up off the wreath, like the candlestick ring. So look, one section... Look at all the uh, look at all the leaves you got in there. Great filler. Thank you. So let's get these in here. I'm put this one in the back. Put this one on top of it. So I'm trying to get all our fall colors in there. Let's get this in here. to hold it a minute. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. All right. I'm going to have to 
go to plan B here. Add a lot more glue. <laughs> this off to the side. There. Come on. You always have one stubborn leaf. But isn't that going to look great with the centerpiece? Look at that. So we've got our three pumpkins. Easy peasy. All I did was buy the paint. I had my husband, because I don't think he trusted me with the new, new uh, saw. <laughs> so he cut them for me, and all I did was paint them. And this paint from Valspar that I told you about, it's La Fonda Copper. It's a satin paint. And I'll tell you what, I've had... It's so crusted around the lid, I can't get the lid to close anymore, so I put it in a Ziploc bag to keep the paint from drying up. I've had this paint for four years. I finally had to add a little bit of, uh, of um, water to it to thin it out a little because it was getting pretty thick. All right, so let me push this back a little because now what we're going to do, all right, we're going to create a centerpiece here with these pumpkins around this, okay? Now, you could put two of your pumpkins over here and put the bigger one over here. This is nice for an entry table. This is nice for a dining room table. This is great for a counter. what's in my boutique the pumpkins or the tray the tear trays i haven't added the tear trays yet if that's what you're talking about this i have them in i have two in this color and one in the gray and brown and i showed you on my live last week how to make those now one of the popular things right now in these, let me just move this forward a little bit here. Actually, let me just move it down so you can see what I'm doing next. The hottest thing right now are beads, okay? Whether they would be um, felt balls, they have the neatest felt balls on Etsy, or wooden balls, okay? So I already had this set up, so I wouldn't take long in doing this. The pumpkins, no. I only made three of them. I have to get more paint. Um, so no, I don't have them in my Etsy boutique. So I figured I have a lot of do-it-yourselfers on here that I thought they could, they could manage that. And I told you where I got the spools. They were from Michael's. They're back near the feathers and the fun foam. Don't look where they have the candlesticks because you won't find them there. All right. So this is what they're doing. They're stringing either those felt balls or wooden balls like this, okay? But you want them not so tight because you want them to be able to curl over the side, all right? So, let's tie this off. And I forgot to bring it up. And then they're making like a, oh, what did you call it, on the end. Um, actually, let me see if I can do it with this because I think I didn't bring the string up. Well, let's try it with this and see if we can do it with this. I have some braided rope here. Let's see if we can do it with this. 
what they're actually doing is creating like a tassel that's what it's called a tassel on the end so let's see if we can create a tassel you could do it with yarn you can do it with um, burlap rope or you know any kind of string that frays And then what they did was they took this all apart. Thank you, Dawn. Appreciate it. Dawn's one of my biz buds. There's a couple of us. We're all biz buds together. I'm just trying to create a quick tassel here to show you what I meant by it. Okay. And then you can comb it out to really get it frayed. Oops. So I'm going to cut this off now, right there. That's a pretty sick looking tassel. I'll have to make a better one tomorrow. I just visually wanted you to see what I meant. So all I did was take a piece of this, folded it over. I had some really fuzzy wool. You know, you could do a really nice tassel. And actually what they do is they tie it straight to the to the beads at the top in the middle. That's where I was going wrong. Okay, so you find your middle point, you tie it close to your bead. Come on, where's the middle? About right there. Tie that shut. Then you fold it over and then you tie the top again. There. Creates a better tassel. And then trim your excess or hide it, or glue it, or whatever. And then you would take a comb to it, a brush, and brush it out and make it real fuzzy. I'm sure there are plenty of videos on YouTube on how to make a tassel. I'm kind of hiding myself here, on I? I'm sorry. Oop. One string came undone. We will tie it again. Like I said, the felt beads, wooden beads, all very popular. For Christmas, they had the white, green, and red. And all they do is hang them off the side. Thank you. Let's see if I can just like rough it up. Make it look like a real tassel. <laughs> Not a made up one. There we go. All right. So then what they do is they just hang it over the side. And with the different color beads, oh my gosh, you could do it with your orange, your green, your mauve, you know, your um, beige color. That's all they do is allow it to just hang over the side. I need to move that camera back just a little bit so you can see a little bit better and catch it better. Let me move you back a little bit and see if that helps. Yeah, there we go. All right. Then they use 
this shredded paper from the Dollar Tree. You don't have to. It just makes for a nice base in there. Now you could even hang your tassel off the side like that. Okay. Then, now, I'm going to show you my newest signs that I have for this any any table centerpiece for this holiday okay I've got two I'm going to show you this one and I'm now selling my signs with a handmade easel okay so you don't have to worry about them tipping or anything all right so there you've got that one then the smaller one can go on the top layer and this one says be thankful let me bring you in a little closer so you can see better and if that's not close enough, let me know. This one says fall. The fall goes down vertical. This one says be thankful. This is a little primitive, a little primitive angel on there. There you go. Now you can see her. And then this one says be thankful. So this set of three runs $14.95, comes with its own easel, and you get all three. Okay, this one, I made this one too short, so it actually, these fit better on the ones that are spaced out further, and you'll see that fits on the second one really well. Okay, so why don't we just switch? Why don't we just switch to the gray? Just for the sake of showing you how it's really supposed to look like, okay? And you're just going to scatter all this in here. These were made with uh, cake pans. Cake pans, you've got a candlestick in the middle. I showed you the dowel screws that I used. Um, and then you have the finials on top. All right. All right, so now we got the, the right size. That one was my first one. So in doing my first one, I kind of learned as I went along what I needed. But wouldn't they be cute in the colors of fall? The beads. All right, so then you got your be thankful that goes in here. And you have to sometimes move the, the um, paper around a little bit so your easel fits right on the pan itself. Okay? So there we go. We've got our three signs. All right? Now, let's go ahead and put some of our pumpkins. We'll put the big one over here with this sign, okay? Then, another thing they do a lot of, you could, if you wanted even, um, to put in here, is the little Dollar Tree um, lights. They're little orange um, leaves, okay? You could put those in and around here if you wanted. Then, I found some little mason jars, or I really love the succulents. They are all pretty much the fall colors now, all right? So I thought it'd be nice, and the little beads of styrofoam are sticking to me, I thought it would be nice just move this side so you can see what I'm doing, is to make a little arrangement in this little cup, okay, with the, uh, with the succulents. Using the color palette that I started with. It's just something that you don't expect, but yet, You've got your color palette there, so it works. All right. So there we got a little little color palette of the. Let's see how that would go in there. Okay. Then we have this another little arrangement that I had with our color palette. And I thought, wouldn't that look cute in, in this? So let's put that up here. All right. 
And then, We will leave some of that in there. Then I have what I started. I have some greenery here that has some brown tips on it. We've got some colored leaves. We've got some, I don't know what you call them. They're not an acorn. Orange balls. And we also have some, um, some leaves in here. So now what I'm going to do with this, I packed it all in here together, okay? I'm going to take this roping, and I'm going to actually start at the top, and I'm going to work my way down and just wrap it around. What I'm trying to do, because I'm not going to be putting this in styrofoam, I am actually just going to um, disguise the stems with this burlap rope or burlap trim or whatever you want to call it. Yes, the first one was my prototype. <laughs> and now I'm just gonna wrap this around. And this is a really good idea if you're ever doing like um, like floral bouquets for a, for a wedding, just wrap this around. It just looks so farmhouse. There's a little leaf that snuck out there. We don't want it out there, so we're just gonna trim it off. Ha, ha, ha. So again, I'm just gonna keep wrapping. Making sure I'm getting all your comments. There's a lot of classes going on tonight. I'm going to get rid of some of this on the bottom because I don't want that up there. So see, I'm just gluing and wrapping. could if you wanted to put a little ball on the end and cover the ball with the burlap rope. Now I'm going to take the bottom piece and I'm going to take it up the back so it doesn't show. this a little bit here. So let me see. I'm trying to do this backwards so you all can see what I'm doing. You could even, let me turn this around because I had it all visually in my head. Let's, let's do it this way. Let's put it across and then put the sign behind it. Or, if you wanted, you could put it on the bottom layer also. There's a piece of wire here that's getting in the way. I think I like it better on the bottom. Yeah, better on the bottom. Come on. There we go. Then I have a piece of corn that I thought we could put in there too. Pull it back so you can visually see it. This guy is not liking where he's sitting. There we go. And I don't know if any of you go to the, um, to Big Lots, but they have this foliage there that's really sharp looking too. Nope, I think I'm good there, and I think I'm good there. I think we're good there. Now, if you wanted to, you could lay some leaves around here. You know, 
There's so much you can do with it. Um, little baskets. Sometimes the little baskets look really nice on the top shelf. This basket was handmade, and I got it for 79 cents. I love the color. So if you wanted to, if you wanted a little more height up here, you could also put that in there to get some more height. He's sitting on some wording from the pan. There we go. All right. And then I would have my sign over here. Yeah, right? And then I have the biggest pumpkin over here. And then I would have the smaller pumpkins over here. Now, I don't think my scarf, they call it like a dresser scarf, I don't think it's big enough. So, I would definitely have a bigger placemat or whatever. And check this out that I found too. I, I'm going to incorporate that in my next design somehow. I fell in love with that. All I did was take the ribbon off. It's got a candle inside. And then... Okay, that's for for kind of Thanksgiving, that kind of. And then this one, this is my other set that I just listed. This is the Scarecrow one. This is the Autumn Scarecrow collection. So you've got the Scarecrow with some crows in here. You've got this, scare, this crow. And then you've got a little scene with the uh, corn stalks and the pumpkin. So you could basically use everything that you've got in here right now. You could start out with the autumn, and then this whole thing would take you into fall. Move this forward a little bit. Move that forward a little bit. Um, you could add some more greenery up here. Like I said, you could even put a little this little mason jar up in here. I think I have some boxwood. I can put some boxwood in there. Or you could just put some sunflowers around. Let me see. I have some boxwood. I did. Or you can put some more leaves on it. Let's just stick that in there. That nah, looks kind of nah. So there you go. That's what you can do for a centerpiece, your table centerpiece. Oh, I love this this um, leaf. The colors in it are just gorgeous. So you could just lay some leaves in there. And then, if you were Halloween, I showed these last week. This was the Halloween, this was the gnome that matches my sign. This one says Halloween wishes, and there's the cat with the bat. So you could decorate this all in a Halloween theme. There is the Salt House collection too, which is all primitive. The Salt Box House raking some leaves and a crow so there are four sets that i have out there now in this size come on Ooh, this one goes over here let's just put it over here so you can visually see it all We really, really messed around with the easels, and we finally came up with what we feel works best. So there you go. What are your thoughts on, on this centerpiece with your pumpkins and your signs? Aw, thank you. Where'd everybody go? They done left us again. 
I mean, this one looked really cute over here too on the, on this one. And you can always put your medium-sized sign on the second level or on the first level too. See, I can't really see a whole lot. They changed the format again. So there you go. I'll be listing the um, the fall. They're called charger plates. Um, I'll be listing those. They're only going to be like $2 a piece. So they'll be listed. And it just looks nice under your, your tear tray. Or if you didn't have a tear tray and you just wanted to do a bowl of leaves and some pumpkins around, that's an option too. Where did everybody go? Oh well. We gave it our best shot, right? But I think that's a beautiful centerpiece. And don't the beads make it look really nice? I, I, I really wanted to make those felt um, balls myself, but they are really complicated. It's, it's just cheaper to buy them. So, but there you go. Let me move these out of the way so everybody can get a good view of the, of the centerpiece. You like? Another one bites the dust. <laughs> Go figure. Yeah, pour your heart out and they they leave you in a snap. <laughs> oh well. I like it. It's gone on my table. And my daughter in laws love it too, so that's all. Here's another leaf. Let's put a different color leaf like back here. Just real simple. Thank you, Will. Appreciate it. I think the beads are a great touch. I really, I really think they're awesome. And I hope to be making some, thank you, Nanny Dot, um, some of the felted bead um, roping to kind of match everything. But I wanted to go simple, like with the, just the basic color but you could choose the colors within your palette um, to work off of. So. Oh, forgot to wear my apron tonight. Oh well. No big deal. But see, you can you can do a lot with this. And it doesn't take it. And with this, you can decorate from both sides, too. You can go totally around. Thank you. Just something different to decorate with. And it really didn't cost a whole lot. Um, you know, most people have. If your husband's handy, you have wood laying around. So... And I love it now that we've got the easels on there. My husband makes them and I attach them and boom, problem solved. I'm looking at it from this angle and then I need to adjust things a little more. There we go. To get it closer. Thank you, Esther. Esther's in the house. Did you get yourself back in your basement, Esther? Oh, thank you. It just blocks of wood painted orange with a spool from Michael's with a dowel. Drill a hole. And you got somewhere to hang your leaves on and attach your ribbon to. Oh, great. 
So when's the first live from the basement? Don't forget to let me know. I want to know, Miss Astor. Ah, oh, thank you, Helen. Where are you watching from, Helen? Oh, yeah. I'm sure everybody has. I could have and started to, and it's like, no. Nah. Everybody started asking, and it was getting out of control. I, I sell Norwicks, and their masks are much better, so not that yours aren't. I just said you can buy one. <laughs> Let me get them. They're a lot of work. A lot of work. All right, so I'll be listing the charger plates, which are these, the plate on the bottom here, the autumn plate. And uh, I have two, three tear trays, all handmade, all painted and put together by myself. They would come detached, or all you have to do is screw them into each other, the levels. Good. Okay, Maryland. That's awesome. All right, I will um, be on tomorrow at 11 because I cannot be on at 2. So I have a really simple, simple, simple um, Christmas wreath that anybody can make. So we're going to do that tomorrow. Okay. And uh, look for us next week. Uh, thank you, Jeannie. Thank you, Will. Did you all see Willie's pig? I was calling it a her, but she was calling it a he. So, <laughs> okay, great. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I just love decorating this way. This is, this is me. Country, primitive... Oh, I wish I had my, my island set back up. I took it down. If I had that set up, boy, this would be the first thing you see when you come in the door. <clears throat> All right, everybody, you have a great evening, and thanks for joining me, and stop by tomorrow at 11. All right, good night.